You are listening to continuing coverage of the trial of Chad Daybell from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Let's go back to the courtroom. All right. Thank you. The uh, state can go ahead and call its next witness, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The state would call a principal, Rich Garner. I will swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and I can about Thanks. All right. Now that the witness has been sworn, I have a few questions before direct begins. Uh, Mr. Garner, this trial has been live streamed as well as open to the public. Have you observed or watched in any way any of the trial testimony since the case started? No. Okay. Have you discussed with anyone else the testimony they've provided in trial? No. Okay. Thanks for your responses. Mr. Wixom, you can inquire on direct. Sorry, Principal Garner, can you please state and spell your first and last name for the record? Uh, my name is Richard Garner, R-I-C-H-A-R-D. Garner, G-A-R-N-E-R. Thank you. And where do you live? I live in Rexburg, Idaho. Where do you work? I work at Central Elementary School in Sugar City, Idaho. And you're the principal there? I am. How long have you worked there? I've been at Central for about, this is the end of my sixth year in that building in our district. Where did you work prior to that? I was at a, a building right, well, 200 yards away, <laughs> Kershaw Intermediate for 22 years before that. Excuse me. Do you recall working with uh, Tammy Daybell? Yes. Right. I want to draw your attention back to the summer and fall of 2019. Um, first, can you explain to the jury what was Tammy's job at the school? She was our librarian. That was her main job. That was like on our contract. That was her main focus. But she also expanded that. She would do the usual librarian things with checking out books, reading stories to the little kids. Uh, it was kindergarten through third grade. So she was working with them, but she also developed a, and helped us organize our computer lab. I asked her to help to make that better. And she was good with computers. So she developed, was developing our computer lab and showing them basic skills and internet safety and those kind of things. And then she volunteered and she covered some lunchroom duties, uh, outside duties. And then in the lunchroom, she offered to check the kids in for lunch and take the count for the lunch count on her lunch break. So is it fair to say she did a lot of things that she hadn't been originally hired for? Yes. <laughs> she was covering a lot of things. Were there ever things that she volunteered to do at the school? Yes. All the, all the time she would just help out wherever she could. Did you ever have her build a website for the school? No, she made a little, little web page for the kids when they went into the lab to click on it and be able to go into the programs they used and just she, she built that just kind of her own as part of the computer lab. Did she ever do anything with respect to the library windows and curtains? Yes. Well, she's always looking ways to help out and improve. And I just remember um, one time she came and she said, I need to get your approval for something. And I wondered what that would be. And she walked me down to the computer lab and the library. She's like, I made these curtains for the lab. I hope it's okay. Our kids are peeking in the during recess are peeking in interrupting the kids when they're trying to study and and read and I'm trying to help them and so I made these curtains can I hang them up is that okay with you so she would do things like that based on your perceptions of Tammy was she someone who was was well liked at the school yes <laughs> she was always helping everybody and she interacted with all the faculty because she would take their students at library and that was their preparation time so she would interact with all the teachers and at duties, she would interact with teachers and other members of our faculty and staff. So, yeah, and every I never heard anyone say anything bad ever about Tammy. I, I want to ask you some questions about observations that you may have had about Tammy's activity or health. Uh, first, let's start. Can you describe for the jury the layout of your school? Well, it's, it's older. <laughs> It, it is what it is. It's an older little school in a little town. Uh, it's got three wings to it. It's kind of shaped like a T. Um, one, and so the library was kind of down on one wing uh, toward the middle end. And then the lab that we were developing was down and around and on the end of another wing. So. so when Tammy would go back and forth between the lab and the library, how, how far did she have to walk to do that? All the teachers would bring their students to the library to start out because they didn't know for sure what she'd have them do. So she would usually read them a story 
check the books in and let them check out books, do a little activity. And then sometimes she would take them down. Sure. She would check them in, in at the library and then do whatever activity or read them a story. And then if she had thought of it with an activity with the computer lab, she would walk them down the hall and then down the end of the other hall, probably 50 yards from, you know, back and forth. And then she'd walk them back and the teachers would pick them up and, or she'd walk them back to the classroom. How frequent, frequently would you observe her moving around at the school? All day long <laughs> from the start of the first class. Cause she would, she would be getting a class and then walking them back and forth, um, getting another class. And then she would go out to have recess duty, stop by the office to pick up a radio to take out a recess duty. Then she would um, go in and do the lunch count, pick up things for the lunch count and then start back up with classes. So she was busy all day. I, I don't re- I guess the only time I saw her sitting was when she was doing lunch count. And was lunch count an assigned duty or something she volunteered for? Um, it's not something people want to do, and we don't really have money for it. You get a free lunch <laughs> if you do lunch count. She was willing to do that, get a little free lunch on her break and use up her time to do that. Based on your observations of watching Tammy and her activity at school, do you feel, did you ever observe anything? That would have caused you to f- identify whether or not she might have had a health concern? No. Based on your observation, did she appear to be healthy? Yeah, she was just really active, energetic, happy all day. Did you ever notice any changes to her weight, either up or down? Uh, I don't recall any significant change in any way. <laughs> While Tammy was working at the school, do you recall, was she someone who took sick days? No, she's very reliable. Usually, you, as an administrator, you kind of know the people that have a lot of sick days or are often gone because it's very difficult to get substitute teachers. It's a really hard spot to fill. Kind of everybody in public ed knows bus drivers and substitute teachers. You're, they're very valuable, but it's and it's very hard to fill to get people to fill those positions. And so you know people that require that a lot because it's in your mind because it's hard it, every day that that happens. It It's like, oh, how in the world are we going to cover that? So someone that you're never having to do that, you know, it it comes to your mind, those that need that often. And she, I don't recall her ever needing that. So is it fair you don't remember her to have any sick days? I don't recall any sick days. Did you ever come to know anything about Tammy's activity level when she's not at the school? Well, I would hear at the end of the day as teachers were leaving and, you know, closing down the day. Uh, response, Mr. Rickson. You know, I can just ask a different question. Go ahead. Based upon your personal knowledge, things that you observed, did you ever observe her in any activities outside of the school? Well, I saw her getting her car going to Zumba with other teachers and her daughter, and then they were heading to other classes or things. And then I did see her in uh, at a road race, a running race. Can you first identify when you saw her there and where, and then will you tell the jury about that experience? Sure. Um, it was a Saturday morning, September 7th, and I just were out working in my yard, and we lived 2019 Go ahead. out working in the yard. It was an early morning, and our house is about one block from a park. And so whenever there's a race or an event, we can hear the, the music. So we heard music playing a morning on September 7th, And I wondered what it would be. Uh, A good friend of ours has the timing business for most of the road races in that area. So I asked my wife, do you want to ride bikes or do you want to go over and say hi to our friend that runs the timing business? Perhaps he would be there. So we rode our bikes over and saw that it was his timing business. And we walked over. He was not there, but others. So we just visited with people we knew. And I remember just finishing that up and turning to look and Tammy and her daughter, Emma, were crossing the finish line. And I went, Oh, I'll go say hi to Tammy and Emma, just like you would with colleagues and normally. And so I went over and talked to them. And let me back up in case I missed it. What kind of a race was this? Oh, it was a, it had a variety of distances, but I believe they ran the 5k. And when you went over to talk to Tammy, what did you observe about her physical condition at the end of the race? Um, she just looked like someone who ran a 5K. And <laughs> she was just 
Tammy. She's like, I said, hey, good morning. You did it. Oh, it's good to see you guys. I didn't know you were be running. And she said, oh, yeah, we're here to support Joe. That was uh, Emma's husband. And he had been sponsoring the race. It was, a, it was raising money for a charity. So they wanted to support him. So uh, she and Emma ran the race. And we just chatted for a moment. They just were catching their breath and sipping waters and just like normal people that are finishing a, a race and then said goodbye. And then we went home. So based on your observation of her at the end of the race, was there any reason for you to, to think that she um, wasn't healthy based upon her completing this race? No. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people finish races. I've coached a lot of cross country and track and actually helped time some of those events at those races. And I've seen people finish and what different ways that they finish. And there was not any concern I had for them. They seemed totally fine. How did you first learn of Tammy? Well, let me withdraw that. At some point, did you learn that Tammy Daybell had passed? I did. How did you learn about that? On October 19th, 2019, I got a text early in the morning, earlier than usual on a Saturday morning, and it was from a former co-worker. And it kind of surprised me because I hadn't heard from them for a while. And I, She did have a second grader in our building, so... It wasn't totally unusual that she would text me, but I got a text in that morning and it said, we lost Tammy. How did you react to that? It was puzzling because I'm like, why am I hearing for her? And we lost Tammy. I didn't know what that quite meant. And my first thought actually was, oh no, she's taking a job somewhere yet, somewhere else. That was my first reaction in my mind. And how are we going to ever replace her and everything she covers? And then I thought, well, maybe she means... Maybe she means she's not going to be here this week because she had been talking about her mother and her mom was having some struggles. So I thought, oh, we lost, maybe we lost Tammy for this week. And no, how are we going to, who could cover the library for the week? Well, that was my initial thoughts. So I called her up and I asked her about it. And then I found out that it was much more serious than that, that Tammy had passed. May I ask, who did you call up? Um, I called up the person that texted me. And that's when you learned that she'd actually passed away. Yes. She lived near her, the person that texted me into, and she was part, involved in a, a part of their congregation at church. So she had found out very early because they had been contacted for helping the family with the, you know, that she had passed away. So she was kind of emotional and she realized, oh, I would need to know because she had been a teacher. So she realized, oh, I better let Mr. Garner know because it's going to affect a lot of people and, you know, her son and everybody at the school. So I better let him know that Pat, Tammy had passed away. What was your reaction when you learned that she had actually passed away? Um, I was just shocked. I was stunned. Why? Well, I thought she must have been in a car accident or something had happened because I don't know why she would pass away. So it was just really shock, really shocking. What did you do when you learned that information? Um, just gathered myself together kind of you got you know trying to figure out a plan a game plan I uh, realized man I need to reach out to Emma because she's also worked at our building that was going to be a huge deal to Emma uh, to lose her mom because they were so close um, and how how we could help out and what we could do to get through this next week and, and the rest of the school year at this point it was a, a, a big deal are you saying these are the things that were going through your yes, mind? Yes, yes. So what did you do next? Once you'd thought about Emma, what did you do? Uh, I realized, well, I want to reach out to the, Emma, her daughter, and other employee, like it would any employee. I was concerned about her. And so I asked my wife if she'd go with me, said, will you, you know, go out with me? I want to visit with her, make sure she's okay, see what we can do to help maybe try to get an idea of the the schedule they have or if they've had a, any idea what could be done, you know, to help them out or get ready for what was coming up with our logistics for the next while. So did you attend, did you go to the Daybell home? We did. Yeah. My wife and I. Who did you first see and make contact with? I still, I, I, that's pretty vivid. I remember knocking on the screen door and it opening and Emma opened the door and she just took a little small step down to where I was and just collapsed onto my shoulder and just fell onto my shoulder. 
without speaking to anything she said, what what did you observation did you make about her emotional state? She was she just was weeping on my shoulder, and I mean I, I felt for her, but I was a little awkward because my wife's standing there and she's an employee, and, and I'm a guy. <laughs> and in education, elementary especially, you always have to be mindful of your interactions, and so I could tell she was very distraught, and I just held her there. And I looked over at my wife and she just kind of smiled and she was just on my shoulder for about a whole minute. And then finally she asked us to, do you want to come in? And we stepped back into the house. At the house, did you ever have any contact with Chad at that point? Yes. And first of all, can you explain to the jury, what were your observations about Chad's demeanor and an emotional state when you got there? So we stepped in the house and she... Emma sat kind of back, sat down to the side on my left and talked again for a little moment. How are you doing? Are you going to be, you know, whatever time you need to take off, we'll understand, we'll help you. Visited for a moment, and then my wife stepped forward and was visiting with her. And that gave me a chance. I kind of scanned the room at that point to see who else was there and saw some of the other children. Um, but I, I really only knew Emma at that point. So I didn't, I knew they were the children, but I didn't know names or anything. And then I scanned that. I saw Chad behind me to the right kind of just back behind i didn't know he was right there he was just standing right there and how was he behaving he was just standing there did you have a conversation with him i did i reached out offered my condolences um asked what we could do to help uh, i didn't you were trying to be empathetic and sympathetic to the situation but also i was hoping to to know if they had a plan i asked about how things were going and he it came up that Tammy was gone. She was in Springville. And that uh, I asked kind of, well, what is your plan? Do you have a plan yet? I know it's early. Um, he didn't really say a lot because, and I, I just put it to, in my mind, I was putting it that he was probably in shock or really tired, exhausted from us, you know, the eat, the night and everything that went on. So. Why Why were you um, concerned about whether he had a plan at that point? Well, I wanted to, re, you know, to be kind to them and, and off that. But also, if I wanted to know when the funeral might be, what they had in mind, what their thoughts were. Because if, like I said earlier, it's difficult to staff a school. And so many people like Tammy, I knew that everybody would want to go to the funeral. And so I was like, how can we do that? If it's going to be like on Saturday, it's no big deal. That'd be great. If it was on Friday afternoon or something, everybody can just go. And then when he said that it was going to be Tuesday, you, you know, you want to be gracious. <laughs> but I was like, Tuesday and in Springville? I said, what are you doing here? What are we doing in Sugar City so that we can all attend? And we all adored her. We loved her. And I want him to realize that we all cared about Tammy. And your wife was loved. And we really... We, we want to be here. I know that most everybody that works in our building wants to go and honor her. And so it was obvious that it was going to be Tuesday for a funeral in Utah. And that was it. And I just thought with, with, with trying to be polite because of the situation, just like, then my mind's racing. I'm, we're going to have, we had 20 teachers and I know most of them and myself, I should go there. I should be there. How do we all go to Springville, Utah, four and a half hours away and get back and cover 400 students and everything else with the school? So I, I encouraged, I asked, is there any way we could have a memorial or do something here? Because we're all going to want to come and do something for Tammy. Is it, is it only going to be the Tuesday funeral? What was his reaction? Uh, he said, I don't want to inconvenience or put anybody out. Did you have occasion to explain to him some of the concerns with the logistics in the school? A little bit, but I didn't want to make it, I didn't want to come across that, oh, it's just about us being convenient, <laughs> you know, and, and at the school. But I, I shared that it would be a lot easier if we could have something at a time where so many of us could attend. And in that conversation, when you pressed him more, did he ever agree to arrange a memorial? He... He said, well, possibly we could do something. Uh, and we agreed that he was going to check. And then we would 
talk later, see if we could work something out. And did you later talk to him more about this? Yeah, after, so then we left and my wife and I went our, over to the school. And well, I went to another coworker to kind of say to them, did you hear what happened? Can you give me some ideas? These are possibilities. Um, she was the same. Uh, so I visited with a so, couple. Hold on. Okay. We got to wait for a new question here. I sustained an objection. Go ahead. So Principal Garner, just, just isolating it to conversation that you had with Chad, just explain to the jury what plans were eventually made. So later, my wife and I were at the school. I was finishing up a painting project and he called and I had it on speaker because I had a roller in one hand and that, you know, I was painting. And so we were just talking it through and we came up with a, an idea and, and that it would work out to have a memorial service for Tammy on Wednesday at one o'clock. That way the family could have the funeral in Utah on Tuesday and then drive back the morning of Wednesday. And then we, it took quite a bit because the superintendent had to approve this and the school board had to vote to close school. So we did, I explained that to him. I'd have to get all permission to do all these things so everybody could attend, but we closed just our school out of the whole district. We just closed our school and we had a memorial service for her at one o'clock on okay. Wednesday. Had you proposed the idea to him to maybe even do something in the evening on Wednesday or another day? Well, I, I don't recall the, all the details of what we worked out. Ultimately, um, who made the plans for the agenda or arrangement for the actual memorial service? Right before it was, it was I don't know exactly when, but I received a text and it was a text for the service of who would speak and the songs and those kind of things that came, had to be pretty close to Wednesday because I had to go. Nobody was around to do that. They asked me to help out. And I said, do you have a program or anything? And they said, we have a plan. All right, Mr. Ricks, I'm going to ask for the witness to clarify, please. Certainly. Could you, you're being asked to explain the context of this particular conversation. Who was it with and when was it? I got a text and it said the list for the program. I can ask an additional. Go ahead, Mr. Wixom. Thank you. Who sent this text you're talking about? I don't know. I believe it was Emma sent me a text listing the program. Ultimately, did you learn what the plan was for the memorial? Yes. And was there anything that you believed was unusual about that? Well, I was surprised that they, that we, we were doing the whole thing, kind of. <laughs> they, did, they wanted me, they asked if I could arrange it. So I contacted the, the bishop of their congregation and arranged a time and for the church to be opened. Uh, and I had run Wednesday morning and get the program. We made a little program for the, the memorial. As far as you understood, was there any help you got from Chad on those kinds of logistics for the memorial service? No. You know, may I have just a moment, please? You, you may. Thank you. You know, at this time, the state has no further questions. All right. Thank you. Mr. Pryor, you can cross. Good morning. Good morning. Um, would you prefer that I refer to you as principal or Mr. Garner? What would be your preference? Mr. Garner's fine. Thank you. So, Mr. Garner, I saw through the records that um, you were interviewed by... Um, Officer Mattingly, is that right? That's correct. Do you remember when that interview took place? It was in May of 2020. Judge, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, if I could just have a moment, Judge. Yes. Okay. And I noticed that in the um, interview, you used an expression when you were, when you were discussing um, Emma and Tammy's relationship. Do you recall what that expression is you used? Um, I don't know the exact word. I, I, if I were to suggest to you that you said Emma and Tammy were thick and tight, would you explain to me what you meant by that? Uh, they were mother and daughter and colleagues at work and friends. Well, thick and tight, they're mother and mother and daughter, but it was more than that, wasn't it? They were they were exceptionally close, correct? They were very close. They worked at the same school together. During any free time, they tended to spend most of, most of their time together. Would that be fair? Yes. 
but now you you spoke about um, Tammy and and what you observed, but you also told Officer Mattingly that um, you didn't know anything about um, Tammy outside of school, correct? Well, I was talking about they uh, went to Zumba. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm talking about in terms of her home life, what was going on with her family at home. You don't know anything about that, right? I was not very aware of her. Okay. Uh, really. What you were aware is what was going on at the school and the fact that on a couple of occasions, you may have observed her going to a Zumba class, right? Correct. Okay. Now, in terms of the 5K race that you referenced, um, you mentioned that Joe was the uh, sponsor of that race or was the promoter, What? what which was it? organizer promoter. organizer yeah. okay and then tammy mentioned to you that you were that uh, they were there to support joe as part of the organizer of this event correct yes they and would you would it be fair to say that joe would know you know who ran in the race or who participated in the race yes okay and you saw tammy at the finish line is that right yes i saw them cross the finish line okay okay you, so in other words you actually saw tammy running is that what you're telling me yes Okay. Now you, um, in, with this uh, knowledge that Emma and Tammy were so close, uh, Emma's grief in this situation was was very genuine. Would you agree with that? Yes. And you mentioned that you thought, and I don't want to put words or, or cause a, an objection, but when you said that uh, Chad was there, uh, uh, did you did you think that was shock or 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 he was just being stoic? Uh, I believe I used the word stoic. Okay trying to be strong. Is that fair? I don't know. I, I put it to, he could have been exhausted. He could have been in shock. He could okay. have been strong. I don't know. Okay. Now, were you aware of um, where um, Tammy grew up and where her family roots uh, originated? I knew she was from Springville. Okay. So did you find it unusual that they would have a funeral in the place where she was raised and her family roots? Would you find that something somewhat unusual? No. Okay. So this idea that you wanted people to, uh, from your school, to celebrate at the memorial, um, you approached Chad with that idea, correct? Yes, we were wanting to be able to honor her. Right. And and you would agree that she was a, a reliable worker at work and someone that uh, could be counted on at work. Yes. She's one of these people that, whether she was sick or not, she would come to work and she would work and, and not really let on that she may not have been feeling well. That's consistent with her character. Objection, Your Honor. The attorney is testifying. Stain. Would it be consistent with her character to show up to work and put on a strong face? Would that be something you would, you would, you wouldn't, uh, uh, something that you would expect from someone like Tammy? Possibly. Okay. You mentioned Officer Mattingly that uh, Tammy was um, with the school district for four or five years. Is that what you said? That's what I said at the time. Okay. And Tammy was actually with your school for, she was just starting her second year. Is that right? It was my, I was the start of my second year working at the school. So my time working with her. Right. And it was her start of her second year as well, correct? I'm not sure. Okay. And at the start of your second year, that's when uh, the insurance, as far as getting insurance and insurance kicking in, would would start. You'd be eligible for that bump on the insurance once you start your second year. Is that right? Objection outside of scope, Your Honor. Sustained. Okay. Judge, I think that's all I have. All right. Any redirect? Judge, could I inquire as to where the redirect would come from? Well, let me first see if there is going to be redirect, Mr. Brooks. I might have just a couple of questions, Your Honor. Go ahead. I'll permit it. Principal Gardner, is it safe to say that you're being asked to recall things from five years ago? Yes. Is it safe to say that? Could impact some of your memory on some details? Yes. Are you confident that you worked with Tammy for a year and a half, regardless of how long she worked at the school? Yes. Is there any, let me throw that. I can't remember if you explained, but did you happen to see the son-in-law, Joe, at the 5K? Overall, you may answer. Did I see, could you restate? Sure. Did you see Joe at the 5K? I did. Any question that you're not confusing that event with another event? No. I, I just went over and spoke to him because he was over by the timing van and I had already gone over there to check to see if my friend that owns the timing business was there. So I'm like, hey, Joe, how are you? I didn't know you're, you know, we had a conversation and then I talked to other people. Then I turned and saw Emma and Tammy. Okay. 
Thank you. Your Honor, I have no more questions. Okay. That will conclude the testimony then of Mr. Garner. Is he still under any uh, subpoena from the state for potential recall? He is, Your Honor. All right. Well, then, uh, Principal Garner, as you're excused today, I'll note that there's an order in this case prohibiting witnesses from observing testimony. So the state can further discuss that if they intend to recall you, but uh, you would not be permitted to view further testimony uh, or you may be excluded from future testimony if you're watching what others have testified to in the case. So uh, with that in mind, then that will conclude the testimony of this witness. And you can go ahead and step down. Thank you for your testimony. All right. Um, from the prosecution, then I understand the state's requesting that we break for today. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. I think as we indicated yesterday, our next witness had been a little lengthier of a witness. And so I think today would be a good stopping point to come in fresh on Monday. All right. Um, we had discussed that schedule. So we are going to conclude for the day. We'll begin again with testimony on Monday morning. For the weekend, then, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please continue to abide by the court's instruction to not do anything to research this case. Don't look up the case or any of the trial, uh, pub what, what's being publicized or reported in the media. Don't discuss the facts of the case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Uh, you're not permitted to do that until your deliberations begin. And we appreciate you continuing to follow that instruction each day. So we'll now be in recess until Monday morning. We'll intend to begin the testimony again at the regular time and schedule on Monday with evidence starting at 830. So unless either side has anything further, we'll recess for the weekend. Nothing, nothing further, further from oh, sorry. nothing further from the stay either. Nothing from the distance. OK, thank you, counsel. We're in recess. All right. Please. <laughs> I'll uh, look at the lands and I'll probably, if I think there's any issues, we look at if there's any issues. Well, they're going to call him three or four times. There's more to come in the trial of Chad Daybell. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our continuing coverage right here from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. <laughs>